Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Calendar with Droid Live. And I'm taking a look at 20 tips and tricks for the HTC One. So I've had it for two or three days now, played with it, sort of worked through the intricacies and oddities that exist in HTC Sense 5. and wanted to share some of those so that if you pick up an HTC One in your future, you'll have no problems navigating around the device and figuring things out. Uh, as you're probably well aware from my initial software tour over, over the weekend, there was definitely some things that threw me for a loop. HTC's done some odd things with Android that will take some getting used to if you're coming from another Android device. So let's jump into this right away and start hammering these out. First thing, lock screen, right? You guys have seen lock screens a number of times, and this is not that different than other lock screens, but initially HTC will tell you to grab this little lock and drop it in there and that's how you unlock the device. And that works fine. But if you don't wanna necessarily grab that lock icon since it's kind of small and in the middle, feel free to just swipe up anywhere on the screen. It'll unlock it. As long as you're in, you know, swipe to unlock, you can swipe from anywhere and it'll unlock the device. You don't necessarily have to grab that lock. Um, and then as with other or previous HTC devices and you know, like Samsung's, things like that, you can grab apps directly from your dock down there and load right into those. Uh, you can also do that with folders. So this folder that I have of apps, I can drop that. And it'll pop open the folder as I unlock it. So those aren't necessarily new, but they're definitely something that's still there. We should also point out that your dock, however you have your dock set up, is exactly how your lock screen is going to look. So with Samsung devices, you could go in and customize your lock screen to have different apps down there than you would have, say, once your device is unlocked. With HTC, you can't. Whatever your dock is, once it's unlocked, that's the way it looks on the lock screen as well. So if I unlock, you can see they don't change, they're exactly the same. Okay, so enough lock screen. Let's talk about blink feed for one second. I'm trying to give it a fair shot. It's not really working that well, but hey, we're, we're giving it a shot. So if you're using this, and say you're swiped down here and you're 10 stories deep and you wanna get up to the top and refresh to get more, the quickest way to do that is just to tap on the notification bar and it jumps you all the way to the top. Okay, then if you wanna refresh, you just keep pulling down on this. You can see release to refresh right there. It'll refresh and it should then bring up new stories assuming there are any. Okay, so that's Blink Feed. Let's move on out of there. Uh, if you want to customize your home screens outside of Blink Feed, a quick pinch will get you into this menu. Uh, so if you zoom in a little bit up here, uh, if you want to remove home screens, you can long press and remove them. If you'd like to set a new one as a home screen outside of Blink Feed, you just drop it on set as home. You can see that home icon moves over. You cannot get rid of Blink Feed. Again, I've said this, I don't know how many times. You can't get rid of it, it's stuck there for good. The only way you can get rid of that is install a third party launcher. Uh, if you wanna add new panels, you can just keep tapping this plus panel button. And then if you wanna remove those, you can just do that. Now, for some reason, I, I'm under the impression that when this phone was unveiled, you were able to grab these and swap these around and rearrange them. Now the blink feed one always stayed right there on the left, but I was under the impression you could swipe around these other ones and you can no longer do that. Or maybe you never could, I'm just imagining it, but that's what I remember anyway. So you can just go ahead and remove those. Uh, if you wanna add a widget, it's just like you normally would. You have your previews up here. You can grab a widget, highlight a box, drop it, and it'll go right into that page. If you want to remove one of those, you can long press on it, drag it up to remove, let it highlight red, and then it's gone. All right, so that's home screens. Not really a lot of new stuff there. Uh, we just thought we'd show you that. So let's jump into the app drawer. If you jump into the app drawer, initially this is what it looks like. You have that same clock and weather that you have in Blink Feed. Uh, and then you have a, it's actually a three by four app drawer because you can see that first swipe actually moves the, the clock out of the way and you actually do get three by four. If you don't like that, do a quick pull down, grab the menu over here, go to grid size, change that to four by five, and then you'll see a number of different apps in there. Uh, if we want to jump to the top of the app drawer, say you're way down here, just like in Blink Feed, you can tap on the notification bar and it drops you all, or I'm sorry, drags you all the way back up to the top. Uh, you can sort apps in here. Again, this little, little pull down, you'll see alphabetical. You can go in here and do custom or most recent. I'm sort of an alphabetical guy, so we'll just leave it as alphabetical. Um, one of the uh, confusing things, actually, before we get to that, if you want to hide apps, like say there's a bunch of bloatware on here, and typically there is... So say you don't want a certain app to ever show up, you can go into menu and there's actually a hide apps section right here. And you can go into hide apps and then from here you can actually start checking items that you want hidden. And then you can say done and those will go away. Okay, so that's how you hide apps from the app drawer. Um, I, there's definitely some bloat on here which I was surprised about that can go away. All right, so the other thing, and this is where I got 
all sorts of flustered in my video the other day. If you want to add or remove items from your dock down here, it's a little bit different. You actually have to have your app drawer open, okay? So if I'm on my home screen, say I'm on one of these home screens and I don't want my camera here anymore, I can drag the camera up and drop it here, but it, you can see it replaced it there. It didn't go away. So I can grab the shortcut and get rid of that. But if I want to get rid of the camera, there is no way to get rid of the camera. It is absolutely impossible from this screen. Okay, so you actually have to go into your app drawer. And if I want the camera gone, I grab my camera and I drop it back in my app drawer and you can see there it is. And if I want that back, I grab it and drop it here. And now it's in my dock and it's removed from my app drawer. Okay, so like I have Google Play and Google Maps and all these apps in this folder on my dock. None of those are in my app drawer anymore. So it's a different way of functioning, but that's just how HTC's decided to do it. So also I should point out if you're from here and say you wanna get rid of this or change this, you're on a home screen, you can't do it right, but you also can't get into your app drawer. So I can't like hover over the app drawer button and then have it open and then do it. You actually have to put it back, go into the app drawer and then do your business. Kind of weird, it's just the way they're doing it. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of it, but hey, that's what's going on. Uh, let's jump into settings real quick, pull that menu down, jump into settings. Um, and if we want to disable any apps for good rather than just hide them, you go into your app drawer, or I'm sorry, your settings menu, go into apps, pull up your list of apps, and this hasn't changed from Android in general. Find an app that's blower that you want gone, click disable, and it'll say this may ruin other apps, whatever, it's called 7 Digital, I have no idea what that even is. It's now disabled, I can re-enable it if I want. You guys have seen that before, it's not necessarily new. Um, the organization of HTC settings menu is just a little bit different than normal Android. So apps right down there. Uh, the other thing I want to show you in here was language and keyboard. So if we go into HTC Sense Input, which is the HTC stock keyboard, there's an option right here for trace keypad. So trace keypad is the sort of swipe writing gesture style um, keyboard that you've seen with swipe or Google stock keyboard or swift key flow. By default, this is not enabled. So there's no swiping, you just have, you can just tap on the keyboard. So if you want swiping, you have to go into settings and click the box for trace keyboard. Okay, just wanted to make sure you guys knew that. Uh, let's talk about task switching real quick. So let's say I'm in the middle of a task real quick. Uh, there is no task switcher button down here on the bottom. You have a back button and a home button. So in order to get to your task switcher, you actually have to double tap on home and then it pulls this up. Okay, it's a different sort of card style layout. If you want to get rid of one, you can just swipe up on them just like this and they go away. So that's how you kill off tasks and you can just keep doing that until they're all gone. Okay, if you want to get into Google Now, Google Now is a long press on home Sometimes it doesn't work, and there we go. It should pop that right up. Okay, that's how you get in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and press home. That's how you get into Google now. All right, let's talk about camera for a little bit since the camera is one of the number one selling features here with the, uh, with the HTC One. So in the camera, if you wanna switch between the front camera and the back, you'll notice there isn't necessarily a toggle to do that. So if you want to, it's a swipe down and the camera switches. You can see there now it's looking at my ceiling. So another swipe back to the back camera. You can even do it from the bottom of the screen. This is how you do it. So this is how you toggle between um, cameras. All right, so let's see what else we got. Burst shot. Okay, so burst shot has been along for quite some time. It's just enabled always on HTC's cameras now. So if I want to do burst shot, I just long press on the camera. You can hear it take a bunch of photos. And it takes a ton in just a matter of seconds. Uh, but this is the coolest part of it, and it's best shot. And this is not necessarily new again as well, just want to make sure you know, you're know you aware of it. It takes a bunch of photos as long as I'm holding that down. Uh, but then I can say, I want best shot. So rather than going through all these and seeing which one was actually good, I can just type tap best shot. And it says, we will save your best shot depending on what we feel is your best shot. And the rest of them will all be deleted. So you're not left with 30 crappy pictures. All you have to do is hit best shot and then okay, and it'll just save that one picture. All right, so let's talk about Zoe. So Zoe is the three second video recording camera feature, right? Which is probably my favorite feature of the phone so far. And it's this little white icon right here. Oops. So if I tap on that, you'll see Zoe enabled. So that's blue, Zoe enabled. And then when I click on the camera button, it actually records a three second clip. And you can see the, the red bar sort of showing me that it's recording that. Now, when you record these Zoe's, they actually are little clips. So if I go into the gallery and view that, 
it, it records the audio and everything. So it does record a little video clip. And then HTC, the, the one uses those Zoe's later on to do all sorts of awesome editing things. And, and I'll get into those later, but I just wanted to make sure you at least know how to use HTC Zoe. In order to use it, you have to toggle right here with this little button on off. Okay, and if you have it, if you have it just on normal, all you have to do is just tap and your phone will take one picture and doesn't record or do anything special. That's just sort of how it works. All right, so I wanted to show you in the gallery, there's just some different ways that um, HTC does things. So if we go in and let's say we just go into my photos um, and you have all these galleries set up, right? So let's say I took a bunch of photos today. I'll go into camera shots. Actually, nope, let's not do that. Let's go into camera shots this way. Nope, let's not do that either. Again, this is sort of confusing at times. Let's just say I have a whole bunch of camera shots and it's organizing them. Oh, I know what's going on. Let's go up to events. A lot of times your, your gallery will be sorted by events, <clears throat> which are by location or date or things like that. So let's say I took a bunch of pictures today, which you can see it thumbing through up here in a highlight. And I wanna break those out. Like, let's say I was um, at a blazer game during the night, but during the day I was on location somewhere else taking photos of something fun and they're all into one gallery for today. So if you wanna separate those out, you can long press on the event for that day and you can either do merge to or split to. And if you do split to, it then brings up all the pictures you've taken. So I can say, let's highlight these. I don't necessarily want these in there. I'll leave my popcorn pictures in there. And then if I hit split, it brings up my event list again. Now this is a step where it doesn't necessarily tell you what's going on. You can either choose a gallery you wanna split those into or you can hit plus and create an entirely new one. So I'm gonna go pop, oh no, these weren't popcorn. Either way, I'm already typing it. So I typed pop, although that didn't work. Let's try that one more time, popcorn. All right, and then I hit okay and it's gonna then move all of those photos that I just wanted to split out of there. And now I should have a new folder called popcorn and there they're all in there and then my popcorn <laughs> pictures are actually left over in this gallery so you want to do that simply because your highlight videos you want to be able to separate things out from highlight videos now you can do that sort of manually but if you want to create folders of just one sort of sort of place or location or event this is the best way to do it um, when i talk about highlights i'm talking about when you're going to an event you can see up top here, it automatically creates a highlight video of whatever's in this sort of, in this event. So if I had one that was gathered of blazer pictures and food photos and all this stuff throughout a day, this would be just one jumbled mess of my entire day. And maybe I just want it to be of the blazer game I was just at, if that makes sense. All right, so then I also wanted to show you this really cool feature that, you know, this may be new or may not be new, um, but let me go back in here. We go into albums. This is a, so I'll go into downloads. Now, when you're recording videos with most phones nowadays, you can record videos and take pictures or still shots at the same time. But ACC's done this thing where if you're actually watching a video, there's a blank feed for you. You can actually take photos and still shots during the video. So you can see a little camera button right here. You can tap that and it just took a picture. I keep tapping that, it keeps taking pictures. And this is a video that's already been recorded on my device. So I'm assuming you could do this with any video clip that's old or new or whatever. Like say you record a video and later on you're like, oh, that's really funny, let me grab a still of that. You can do it after the fact with the HTC One. So if you look in this gallery now, here's the pictures I just snapped from there. And they're you know crystal clear as long as your video is good. They should be just still frames that it pulls from it. Just thought that was very interesting. Um, the other last thing I wanted to show you then to wrap up sort of this 20 or so tips and tricks is um, screenshots. If you don't know how to take a screenshot, it's a hold down the power button and volume at the, and volume down at the same time, a couple of seconds, and there it takes a screenshot and it puts those straight into your gallery. You can share those from your notification bar, all of that good stuff. So this has just been a quick tutorial or tips and tricks session with the HTC One. I know that was quite the long video and some of the stuff you've seen before, some of it again is just, is just, is just specific to the HTC One that I wanna make sure you know how to do. So anyways, we're Droid Live, we got more coming. We'll dive into the camera a lot more in, more in a lot more detail. We'll look over some other things. We'll make sure you guys know everything there is to know about the HTC One before it hits stores. So Droid Life, peace.